All right, uh, let's uh, let's jump in. I'll um, I'll start with a bit of housekeeping. So I'm Benjamin Walsh, um, sustainability specialist at Abley. Just um, a bit of uh, housekeeping. Yeah, you can type your questions into the the chat um, as we go through. You won't be able to um, speak nor um, turn your video on, but just uh, ask your questions in the chat. And do note that this uh, video uh, is recorded, and we'll issue the uh, the webinar recording after this uh, presentation. Okay, let's uh, let's jump in. So, I'm here to talk about the CarbonWise Commuter Emissions Tool, which we just developed, and um, the the focus of this presentation will be to actually give you a feel for how the product works. And uh, so, I'll demo the interface in a moment. Uh, I know it's very important for people to know um, what things look like, what features are there, uh, to give people confidence that this is a tool that they might need for their for for their organization. So um, we'll um, just kick off with a bit of background on Abli. So Abli um, is the company that developed CarbonWise, and we are a transport and tech company. Um, we provide the following services that you see. On the screen, and where um, uh, where we have unique expertise is where we combine transport and technology, which is what we've done for for CarbonWise, and we're about um, about 80 employees um, scattered around the country. So, why did we build CarbonWise? So, uh, we have expertise in transport planning and travel planning, and so in the past we've helped clients um, in UK, but also in New Zealand. Um, measure commuting patterns, measure emissions as well from, from that commuting, and then uh, devise initiatives to actually tackle uh, commuting. So that means providing people with alternatives that are healthier and more sustainable. Um, and that's where that's where employers have a large uh, have a large role. But what we've noticed is that it's often a very tedious process. So some organizations have tried to do it in-house and that involves doing a, a travel survey, an employee travel survey with off-the-shelf solutions. Um, such as SurveyMonkey, um, but then it requires analyzing the, the data, uh, which is a lot of Excel time, and then presenting the data. Um, plus, lots of organizations don't have transport experts in-house, so um, they, they would struggle to do it um, to the right standards or to measure commuting accurately. So we thought this whole process could be streamlined, and we have the expertise in-house to do that. So we set out to um, talk to the industry understand from a whole range of large organizations and smaller ones um, how they want to approach commuting and uh, what's the best tool they could get to uh, to make it easy so that they're, they're not shying away from doing it anymore. So we talk to large corporates in the country, we talk to large government organizations, we talk to SMEs as well. Um, so a lot of them were telling us that they would love to measure commuting and to to have the data to inform those workplace initiatives to help their employees commute um, with, with more more options uh, rather than car use. Um, but it was tricky, it was costly, and so as a result, lots of organisations were not including commuting emissions in their greenhouse gas inventory at the end of the year. Um, so with CarbonWise, we want to make it easy. Um, for companies to go through this process and to actually be able to include commuting emissions in the inventory so that there's more transparency about this source of emission. And we found um, by doing it um, on ourselves that I believe we've done travel surveys and measured our commuting emissions, we found that actually for an, an office-based organization, it can be quite a large proportion of emissions. For us, it's been about 10% of our emissions total emissions. So it's quite significant and um, um, organizations should should be factoring that in. Cool. So um, now we'll jump into the actual demo of the product and remember to um, ask your questions um, as we go um, and I'll pick them up at the end. Okay, I love this over. Right, so the first thing to understand is that CarbonWise has two applications that are connected. So one of them is the employee survey. Um, so the employer is provided with a link and they send this link out to their employees for them to fill out the survey. And so we can gather that information about commuting trips. Um, and then there's a CarbonWise dashboard where the sustainability team, HR facilities, um, 
operations, whoever in the organization wants to um, take a lead on this topic, um, that's where they'll be able to see the results. And I'll show that in a in a moment. But we'll start with the employee survey. So um, we'll start with the screening question just to make sure it's, this is a bit of a security filter, just to make sure people from another organization don't submit an answer. So uh, this one is set for for Abli and uh, then we'll jump in into the, the, the actual survey. I'll just make this a bit bigger. Um, obviously, this is content that scales to the size of your screen. Uh, so when they start, employees um, are able to see um, the, um, um, the start page that shows a price draw, if the employer has set up a price draw, and uh, then uh, some information about privacy. Then they'll be able to uh, give their email address. Um, so we'll just uh, enter this and um, that will show them, that will enable uh, avoiding duplicate answers, but also if they win the prize, then we can actually contact them. All right. Then we need to know the home address of the respondent. This is used to calculate um, commuting emissions. We need to know the distance that people travel. Um, they do have an option to not share uh, the address if they're too sensitive about this, in which case they just tick this box. Um, and then we'll just assume a default commuting distance. Um, but then um, that means it would be less precise. And so we, we can't provide personalized feedback to them if they, if they don't provide their home address. Um, we also uh, don't keep home addresses. Once we've calculated the distance, we just delete the, the address. So that's to protect people's privacy. So, People can also decide to enter a, a landmark. So, for example, if they don't want to um, give their real address, but they live close to the museum, they can enter this. Uh, but otherwise, they can just enter it. It's in. Uh, yeah. There you go. Cool. Now, the employee gets into um, giving information on their trips, uh, the trips that they took in the in the past week. So um, there's a whole bunch of options because commuting can be quite complex and people do very different things at different times. So first, if they work part time or if they had the day off on Monday, they'll just tick this off. If they, for example, worked from home on Tuesday, um, they'll just select work from home as their workplace. And then uh, we'll get into a case where the employee would travel. So this person was based in Auckland, so they would presumably go to the Auckland office. Now, in a large organization, um, so these are the Ably workplaces that you can see, but in a large organization, all the company's workplaces would be preset in the system. Um, so we can't display them all, but the employee will be able to look for their workplace. So they'll just type in the search function and then they'll be able to uh, select the office. Um, let's say this person had a bit of a multimodal trip, so they'll um, take a train um, and they also walk to the train station. So here we have primary mode and secondary mode. Um, there's a bit of explanation in the tooltip for people to understand what it means. Basically, the primary mode is the longest um, distance. Secondary mode is the, is the shortest leg. OK, um, so that person would have done the same thing on the way back. OK, and then moving on. So this time we'll do an example. Um, I'll show you what the other modes are. So. Um, we have the whole range of uh, walking, cycling, e-scooter, then we have public transport split up into three categories, and then um, motorcycle and two types of car use. So uh, this is car sharing, car with someone, and this is car alone. And other would cover um, edge case examples um, where it doesn't quite fit in into other categories. Um, so let's do car by myself. You'll see that this field on the vehicle type has just um, just popped up, and so um, uh, they have to um, choose the fuel type. We need that to calculate emissions. It's really important. We they'll have a choice between their own vehicle, but also if it's a company vehicle, we want to know because that goes into a different category or scope of emissions. So we want to separate if they use the company vehicle from if they use their own. Um, individual vehicle. So let's say this person drove a petrol car. And then um, let's say on the way back, they picked up their partner and um, still using the same car. So if someone does the same thing a few days in a row, 
they can copy the answers to the next day. That makes their job easier and meets, it means the survey completion time is, is shorter. So they just copy the answers to Friday and this is all there. And then uh, let's say no, we can work. Cool. Moving on, so now we have optional questions. Um, so this is um, things that the employer can set. So um, they'll be able to um, set uh, whether um, they want to ask an employee other questions. So this is a placeholder question that we at Abli ask. Can, it, can, can the company do anything to help you with your commute? But the employer can decide to set any other question and there's the option to have multiple choice options as well. So if you want to assess interest in a carpooling scheme, for example, you can you can do that. It's all done at the survey setup stage. And here, let's say um, the employee would just like more showers or after they've been cycling to, to work. And this is the one of the cool things about um, the software as opposed to the previous process is we can give instant feedback to respondents. So we're not only gathering data from employees, we're also giving them feedback on um, on what they can do and on uh, what their impact is. So um, this respondent, he, uh, their estimated emissions in a year are that much. And we also give equivalence to give something that's a bit um, more easier to understand for people, so easier easier to relate to. Now we're just we're not just leaving the person hanging. We're also providing more information on what they can do to reduce those emissions. So this um, link here would be set by the employer. They can um, set this to be a link to the internet or to their latest campaign on behavior change. So that's also to promote the initiatives in house. And this is general tips that people can follow to um, to reduce their emissions or to um, to change the way they commute. And then the employee can save um, those, those results to a PDF if they if they wish to keep a, a record. All right. So, um, just to, there was a question in the chat on um, the employee side location. Um, so, we're not uh, collecting any location data from um, the employees. They are entering their address into the form, but there's no tapping into uh, mobile phone location or anything like that. Um, OK, so we'll move to the dashboard. So this is, as I said, what the sustainability manager will access um, uh, or anyone else in the organization who um, takes the lead on this. And as results come in, um, they will be able to see um, the responses, the number of responses, which days they were submitted and also have a look at um, how many people have not responded yet. And you'll see here, this gives an indication of the sample size. So here, uh, we uh, those are the ABLI results. Um, so you're seeing real data here. Um, so we have 59 respondents out of 75 employees, which is a pretty good, pretty representative response rate. And so, yeah, the reason why we, why we track respondents over time and when responses come in is because we want to know when to chase people. So you can see we got lots of answers on the second day just after launching the survey, and then it dropped. And then we had nothing more, and then we chased uh, on one of these two days and we got some more. So this is quite important. If you want to push the response rate, you need to know when to chase people. And we can also advise on strategies to um, to chase uh, for respondents uh, efficiently. Now I'll move to the main survey results page. This is where most of the of the data is shown. So um, this is where you really can get into the results and analyze and draw conclusions for what sort of workplace initiatives you can you can implement. So you see, I've got all workplaces selected here. So this is showing the whole organization, um, but I can filter and select a specific workplace. So if I want to see how people in Christchurch, for example, travel to work, then I can just select that workplace and see results that are specific to that uh, workplace. I'll just flip back. Um, so we we do calculate average emissions per person, per employee in a year, and then we calculate what that means for um, the whole organization in a year. So the, these are our annual commuting emissions estimated based on the survey week. And we also calculate work, days work from home in total. The reason why we do that is um, that um, sustainability managers want to use 
um, an emission factor from the Ministry for the Environment, which they can apply. They can multiply the number of days worked from home by that factor. And so that's why we keep it separate and we report on it so that sustainability teams can just go in and multiply that number and report on working from home emissions. Then uh, I'll just um, go through the other outputs here, explaining them a bit. Um, this shows the um, the spread of where people um, where people will sit in terms of their emissions. So as you can see, Abli, we are we're we're walking the talk. So we we are pretty good with our emissions, um, partly because there's lots of cyclists, um, which yeah, it's uh, it's great to see. Um, so you can see where emissions sit and you can see how you can target different activities uh, depending on um, the levels of emissions and the same for commuting distances this is really important because uh, let's say if i flick to a certain office so you'll see that actually a vast majority of our workforce li lives within 10 k's and so that's quite a cycling cyclable distance especially with e-bikes if however we had lots of people in 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 ranges um, that are further away um, then cycling wouldn't wouldn't be the right response and so then the employer should probably look into car pulling schemes or public transport uh, subsidies or whatever is appropriate in this specific context so these outputs help you target the um, uh, the um, the initiatives this is the typical output um, that travel planners would be used to so that's breaking down the trips into categories and showing um, uh, the mode shares this is another version of the mode share, which is um, has a different focus. So the aim here is to assess um, demand for facilities. So on a given day, on an average day, uh, there's 14 uh, numbers of staff, number of staff who are cycling to the Christchurch office. So we know that we need to provide at least 14 cycle parking spaces to provide for that um, average demand, but probably more because we also want to provide for peak demand. So in that case, you'd be looking at maybe 20 cycle parking spaces, which we which we do have. Okay. And then um, uh, one more thing that I wanted to, to show you um, is the export function. So in order for the software to be useful um, for reporting, and for further analysis, we also provide those export formats. So the first one is a raw data spreadsheet that just shows all the responses without any personal data. So there's no address, no um, no email. Um, so uh, the employer can keep that for just for record keeping, but also if they do want to run further analysis um, or run do a bit of scenario testing on the data, they, they can just take that spreadsheet and, and run with it. The summary data is really focused on reporting so that's about sustainability um, reporting uh, see there is a question on emissions uh, we can touch up uh, on that later on but basically the summary data will show which emission factors we're using and uh, the, the answer is we're using ministry for the environment and the emission factors um, so for example for a petrol car we would we would use the default petrol car value and so that summary data spreadsheet also has um, uh, total um, kilometers traveled by each mode and also emissions broken, broken down into modes so that if uh, the organization is using toy 2 eManage for example or any other software for their carbon reporting they can they can take the data from the from the summary spreadsheet and um, put it into the, the software um, either as emissions or as activity data if they just need the the headline figure then it's here and they don't they don't need to go anywhere else all right um i think uh, we should jump into questions i see there's a uh, uh, there's quite a few already so uh, let me just flip my screens okay so um let me just give me just a second to read uh, those questions so um, there's a question about the a good response rate um, for the survey um, that employers should aim for that's the question we often get so as you saw at Abli we got quite a good one but we we're also quite aware so we do uh, we do get good response rates quite easily because people are engaged in uh, in commuting and, and sustainability 
Um, the response rate will depend on the organization and how many workplaces there are. So um, if you have many workplaces, you'll need to make sure there's a person in each site or as much as possible who can keep chasing people on site and who can remind people. So that can be uh, people's managers, for example. It can be the site manager, the office manager. Um, so it's important to have relays in the organization to um, to to remind people to fill out the survey. And when we provide the link, we can also provide a QR code, uh, which you can put on posters around the, the workplace for people to to fill out. Um, as a as a general rule, so um, um, you you need to probably aim for um, 30 percent uh, as a minimum. However, if uh, your organization ha has a is quite large, so 5000 people, for example, then of course uh, that's going to be hard to achieve. And in that case, you can get away with a sample of 500 people because that's already quite representative. If you're a small organization, you need to aim for a higher rate, higher response rate. Um, there's a question on working from home day emissions, um, comparing that to an office day. So we haven't done that work because, um, again, it's a different category of emissions and we know that sustainability teams do their own reporting with that. So we just provide the, the raw number and let them do their calculations and include that in their carbon inventory. So we haven't compared emissions from working from home day compared to an office day, uh, but it, it is an interesting question. Um, in terms of the um, the standards, so there's the ISO standard and um, there's the greenhouse gas protocol. So we've um, we've definitely followed uh, practice uh, best practice from the greenhouse gas protocol, but we go much further than that. So um, where uh, traditional reporting would be satisfied with a survey on on one day in the year to estimate commuting emissions. We're taking a week and we actually recommend businesses do twice a year and um, that way they can account for seasonality of travel patterns. Whereas if you do want one survey a year, um, you the assumption that is representative of the whole year is a bit um, um, is a bit of a jump um, depending on how much it changes between the seasons. Um, so you, we are we are going to we're going beyond uh, anything that's in the standards currently. And we uh, we are going to be um, working with Toitu to see how we can um, get this product uh, recognized and um, possibly accredited um, to see um, to make it easy for uh, their customers to use our data. Uh, but this is uh, work we, we're just starting. So uh, at this stage, we haven't got any um, certification on the product. Um, there's a question about offering this uh, as an API so you can integrate into existing tools and surveys. Um, so we are having discussions on um, um, producing an API that can calculate emissions from any transport trip, uh, whether it's a fleet trip, whether it's a commuting trip, whether it's anything else. Um, because what we've done behind, what's happening behind the scenes in this product is that we are, we are calculating emissions of each trip, and then we are summing up all the trips and, um, and that's, um, Th that's giving us the, the results. So um, we are looking at uh, spinning this off into an API because we are aware there's other other systems in place, um, including systems that some councils might use. Um, and so in that case, the idea would be that um, the um, the user would post a trip. So that means they would send details of uh, origin, destination, and um, and mode potentially uh, vehicle type as well, and then we can uh, we can spit out the emissions and feed into their system. So yeah, if you're interested to investigate any of that, definitely uh, get in touch. Um, so there was a question about um, a breakdown of kilometers traveled per mode of commuting. Definitely the um, activity, um, the summary data spreadsheet does exactly that so you can take that and um, copy the data into your um, toy to e-manage for example or whichever software you you're using um, oh, okay is it possible to have a look at the spreadsheet yes um, let me see if it opens fast enough okay um, so yeah this is 
obviously looking pretty raw, but uh, um, you you can see export dates, you can see the survey period the survey run ran for, um, and then for each. So looking at all workplaces here, you can see emissions um, and kilometers traveled by each mode. So for example, you'd know that uh, there were uh, about fifty one thousand uh, kilometers traveled. Um, were estimated obviously in the whole year by ABLE staff and, and so then we have the equivalent emissions and we provide the assumptions behind and the emission factors that we used um, so that if you do want to um, look back into the assumptions you can also you, do your own, your own work uh, behind the scenes. Uh, right. I'm not sure I'm going to have time for all the questions but thanks everyone for the really interesting questions. Um, So um, we on there's a question about location um, again. Um, for example, using mobile phone location to track um, trips or commutes. Um, so we actually tested a prototype. We we built an app prototype last year um, because we thought um, it's easier to provide feedback and to record trips if it's passive and people don't have to fill out a survey. So we tested that in an external organization on about 15 participants just to see how it works. And people were engaged, people logged the the the, the rides um, and we thought this could go a bit further by uh, using location data. The thing with that is that you start to run into uh, privacy issues. And so while it's not, it's not impossible, you do have to get very explicit consent about re uh, recording these trips. And then uh, you start to lose representativity because lots of people will not want to have their location used and also they, they won't want to install an app. And that's one of the big barriers with, with apps is, um, and it's also what we we found through this trial is that it's very hard to get people to install an app on their phone when they've already got lots of them. Uh, some people are not very tech savvy either, so you, you do have to do a lot of um, support to get people onboarded. Um, and, and then you'll still have a sample size that's a bit limited. So that's why for now, at least, we've stuck to um, doing an online survey that anyone can access and that can be circulated in many ways. And people can take that survey on their desktop, on their tablet, on their phone. The whole interface has been um, designed to, um, to allow all of that. So um, yeah, I uh, might just take uh, one or two. Last question. So, oh yeah, you'll see that uh, my colleague Mel posted details, um, my contact details in the chat. So do get in touch if you have any uh, any further question. I'm happy to happy to, to chat about your your needs. Um, there's a question about measuring performance against other similar companies. So currently, in the um, the way we we set up clients, uh, the client owns the data. So we would have to make changes to our contractual agreement to be able to exploit that data. That, that data currently we're not um, able to um, to use that data for anything else than providing the service. Um, but there is, um, I know there is interest from councils and regional councils. We've had quite a few conversations already on having another level of admin on the dashboard that allows, for example, the council or regional council to. Um, to have a look and um, see data for all the organizations in their area, for example, or all the workplaces in their area. Uh, we think if we if, if we manage to um, um, acquire enough clients and um, do enough service, then we'll, we'll build a significant mass of data that can be used for policy um, and 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 for, yeah, informing policies. And it would be a shame not to make that accessible. So it's definitely something we're keen to look into, but we. Um, would have to make sure we have the right data sharing agreements in place. Uh, right. Uh, and one last question. Um, if um, an employee doesn't want to provide the address, what is the default distance traveled? So currently we use a distance of nine kilometers um, based on um, household travel survey data. But uh, this is something that can be set uh, by the employer or can be changed if the employer has a specific um, distance that it would like us to apply as a default. Uh, it's just um, something that we set, we, we change in the setup uh, phase. So um, yeah, we can we can easily apply another distance if, if that's better. 
Okay, um, I can't answer all the questions. Sorry about that, but do get in touch if you need anything else. And uh, yeah, hope you hope you found that um, interesting. Thanks everyone for attending.